Hello, welcome to our podcast today. Champions are built with the brand, Eric Johnson. And the source, Aaron Thigpen. Got a topic here. Don't know how deep we can dive into it, but just kind of um, some thoughts on, on a subject. Maybe we can even come back and revisit it. But I'm going to call it the gamification of training. And and the effect that that's having on our athletes. Now, I've just been kind of mulling this over because this is that time of year where kids are going to showcases and they they they're doing velos and sixties and things like that. And and so athletes want to prepare for that. So I get a lot of requests about, hey, can I time my thirty? Can I time my sixty? Can I you know do this? And and it's something that I do but it's not something that I do with an athlete like year round. I do it in anticipation of an event. Um, so that way we can kind of tailor our training towards that. But what I found is there are a lot of, and and maybe I'm just old school. I always have to say that, but um, there there's, there's a lot of other facilities and entities where that's kind of all they sell, it seems like. And so you get this, you get athletes and parents who come in who have this expectation of, hey, are you going to time his 60? Is time his 30? And we're like, well, is he going to run one? No. So maybe there's bigger fish to fry than worrying about a 60 now. Or, you know, yeah, you're going to time his 30, you're going to time his 60. Well, when is he going to have to run his 60? Oh, in about six months. <laughs> or we don't know. And so I just kind of wonder, it, are athletes best served with um, kind of how training has has turned into what I call entertainment in a sense where you've got a lot of training centers who are substituting training with these kind of gamified sorts of, of mm -hmm. apparatus and, and calling it training. On baseball, you've got things like hit tracks and rap soto and other training devices that are definitely not going to say that they don't have their training value but if those are kind of the centerpiece of why you're going to a facility or or the centerpiece of your training then i don't know if you're really working towards the essence of performance training and one of the the um negative effects of of athletes who are kind of just solely based on hey well I did this on hit tracks or I did this on this machine or on that machine it, it kind of feeds into the whole um I guess mentality of how some of these kids are raised nowadays where it's all about the the unicorn and rainbow stickers and it's right. like well where's the substance and and are you transferring those stats and those analytics into performance? Right. So that's kind of where I'm sorry if I kind of rambled on there, but that's kind of what I've been kind of thinking about and wrapping my head around. And it's like, how do you find that balance? Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Because we've talked a lot about the lack of athletes ability to compete. Right. And they they have these great launch angles or these velos or, you know, this time. But when it comes to real life scenarios and mono on mono, these kids aren't performing. And I guess one of my pet peeves now is, oh, I'm always hearing about the lab. You know, every, oh, okay, the lab. everything is the lab. the lab, you know, and I'm like, that to me kind of encapsulates the 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 psyche that these kids are having now they're all about you know what results they can get in the lab instead of what results they can get on the field right and and so there i just think there's a disconnect chasing those analytics doesn't doesn't help love what you you said they just kind of triggered a whole bunch of things for for me personally but for us, you and I together, as we 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 talk and champions are built and what makes these unique champions different from everyone. And this is probably one of the things that makes them different. These champions that are built is that they don't think like this. Yeah. 
I mean, um, I call it quick fix solutions, the lab rat. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> I love that lab that, rat. The lab rat. That's, <laughs> I love that's, that. <laughs> that's what we, that's what the kids are or the yeah. athletes are now. It's like, okay, what can we put out to the forefront that will attract people to get our lab rats in here and let's test them all. Mm -hmm. Okay. Test them all. Okay. We have average numbers now. Okay. That's great. We got this now. This is the standard. Well, what standard are you talking about? Right. If you're taking from the mass, are you talking about the best athletes that yeah. are, are competitive in that age group? And then you're comparing them to the lab rats. Right. Or what are we doing? Are we just saying, hey, no, this is the average time that, that we see in our in our business, right? So that's one thing I want to talk about. Our, our kids are chasing these little things to get numbers. Mm -hmm. Okay, the numbers, what do the numbers really mean? Look, I've been evaluator of USA Baseball. We get an uh, analytics. We look at the analytics. We go, okay, you know, is... Does that look right off the bat? That looks good off the bat. Let's just go test it for it. Let's just go look at it. It's not the end all why we pick the player. Right. You know, I look at um, Tony Gwynn. I'm going to use this example. He said this on a video. I don't have the fastest bat speed. I, I didn't have the best hand-eye coordination. I just worked really hard and tried to hit the ball and, and hit singles. And then if I hit a double there, that's a seven-time batting champion. 14, 15 time all star. And he's saying, Well, I, I didn't have the highest exit velocity speed. I didn't have the best bat speed. What I was trying to do is hit the ball for singles and, and just try to keep the line. He said this keep the line moving in the batting order so I could get on base and score some runs for my team. Right. right. I mean, and it goes back to what you said earlier. And, and I really gravitated to your, your comment. We're taking the competitive spirit out of the athletes now, and and they're not competitive anymore. And that's from, you know, just from a baseball standpoint, from a Hall of Famer, it said, hey, listen, this is what I'm trying to do. I'm, you know, I'm trying to get hits to help us win. Winning games. What happened to winning right. games? What, what, where has that gone in youth sports? Instead of numbers, I got to chase this because I always look at it this way. Players, non-process athletes are chasing numbers to get a scholarship or approval. Yeah. Yeah. Non-process athletes. That's right. Yeah. They're, that's what they're searching for. I got to get the number. Got to get the number. Yeah. Got to get the scholarly. Got to get the scholarly. Right. You know, all the time. And I'm wondering, okay, do you know how to compete? Right. It, are you a good teammate? Are you a good fit for this program? So we could go to the College World Series. Right. You know, coaches, look, coaches are smart, man. You know, these college coaches, professional coaches, they're smart. I mean, I look at major league managers, you know, and I, I look at guys that get to the World Series every year, and analytics are used, but they're not the end all. And I think we in this day and age are looking at this as the end all too much for these young people. And when they don't get the numbers, they quit. Yeah, they stop. Yeah. There's, it's not. There's not the process athlete that we are used to seeing, Aaron. Aaron, we're used to seeing that process athlete comes in, grinds, works, gets better, incremental. They just get better, better, yeah. better. I look. I'll, I'll tell you, Mike Ayakawa. I'm gonna give a shout out to Michael. That was him at 14. We saw what he looked like. Yep. And look at him now, thriving in college because he was a process guy. He yeah. wasn't. He didn't come in and and work out with me. Hey, EJ, what's my you know what's my my exit velocity speed right, what's, right. My, what's we're always talking about we got to hit line drives hit the ball in the sweet spot let's make sure our swings together is that the right look let's compare it against other people that really are successful it's very similar to that you know and we started just talking about a process and a plan right. a process a process athlete has a plan and it's longevity it's a marathon not a sprint my man yeah. i'm telling you yeah, he looks really good in the gym right now. He looks really good. I'm very happy with with uh, the work we've been able to do with him. I mean, excellent. Yeah, it, it just seems like, <clears throat> you know, when you start to detach yourself from the competitive aspect of, 
of the game and it may be in my in my realm track and field of your competitors mm -hmm. you got kids that are always just looking at leaderboards right. and that's kind of how they look at themselves in the pecking order but mm -hmm. they forget that sports and performance is a result oriented environment right. and so you can have great stats but if the, the is if the end result wasn't the win it still doesn't matter Mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. we're kind of conditioning these kids to be satisfied with the stats right and, and they think you get these situations where you've got kids who i uh, went 10 for 10 and well what was the pitching like <laughs> oh if, and it yeah, was you, lousy you know mm -hmm. okay right. so you went 10 for 10 but the pitching was lousy well how does that help in in your development and and so I just think when we when we take in these kids and all we're doing is setting them in front of a machine and waiting for numbers to be spit out to validate what they've done, I think mm -hmm. we kind of do them a disservice without still drawing back the connection of the scenario based result, the process of how you do this, or, or maybe maybe how you do something unconventional, your strategy, all of those sorts of things, I think they're kind of neglected just because you're um, focused on, on just that task. In other words, it's kind of like, you know, they're, they're, today's athletes are like mice who can navigate a maze. So to take our lab analogy, right. but you know, outside of that, they can't find the cheese because they don't know how to hunt. <laughs> I like that. You know? <laughs> That's great, man. Oh so, yeah. Yeah. So in certain sterile environments where there's not a lot of variation or X factors going on, these kids are performing, but I'm not seeing the results when I, when I talk to them or when I talk to coaches, when I talk to you after they've come back over the weekend yeah. and it's like, something's going on, what's happening. And yeah. I think when you start immersing a kid in these gamified sorts of programs i don't know if that that helps i you know i think maybe that stuff should be a supplement but it shouldn't be the meat and potatoes mm. of the training and i don't think parents should be looking for that sort of thing to be the sole purpose for you know deciding hey this is what i want to do you know aaron i call it the new painkiller mm. the new painkiller to um, take away the pain, take away uh, the headache, take away the fever, take away a, a way to make everything better. If I get these numbers and I do these things, it will all make everything better. But as a coach, that doesn't work. You have guys that have tremendous numbers and they get on the field and it doesn't, the numbers do not equate to the performance. And that can be snipped out by qualified people who understand what they want in their programs or their teams. And, you know, I love that you said the gamification of training. It's true, you know. Aaron, the process athlete is, is still there. And, and you know what? Coaches are looking for those process guys that have a strategy. You said it. Strategy and plan. You said it. You know, and when you have that, you're going to have success. And you're going to strive to your goals. And you're going to reach uh, peaks that you never could think that you could reach. Because uh, that's a life lesson, man. That's a life lesson, you know, and uh, I think that's important that uh, these quick fix solutions, I don't think is the right way to go. I just, I don't, I don't feel that, you know, you give this kid a number and then that's the end of it. What about training? What about being ready? What about being competitive? You and I talk about this all the time and I come back after our trips or wherever I'm at and I said, man, we're just not competitive at the 
Well, I, I think it's just something athletes are going to have to be more and more conscious of as the technology gets better. I mean, with virtual virtual reality, you know, yeah. and all those sorts of things. Like I said, I think it's great and I think it's fun. I think, you know, it is a way to get kids engaged. <clears throat> but again, what's, I guess, what's the happy medium? And are you using these things as, I guess, kind of training pacifiers? Are they actual, are actually being used as tools? Um, especially with your younger athletes, because if this is what they start to grow up on, then how do you get them to, to separate and just get down and dirty when they need to? Right. So, um, I don't know. I love what you said, man. That flip on that. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Out of the ballpark, man. Yeah, I don't, I don't have anything else to add, but you know, parents kind of think about it, make yeah. the right decision. You know, with that said, it kind of wraps up what we're talking about on Champions Are Built. This is Coach EJ, the brand. And this is Coach Aaron, the source. We'll see you.